morning, good morning. Welcome everyone. My name is Kunji from Cooking with Kunji and you are on Food Talk TV. We are live with our weekly installment of Meet the Fire. Okay. Today we are going to be making a paella. Paella is a dish that encompasses a lot of different cultures. And traditionally, thanks. welcome, welcome in, Mustard Queen. Hi, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Let me just. I was excited when I saw the shirt, here. yes. Yeah. So welcome in everybody. Today we are making a paella. And as I was saying before, a paella is usually um, a dish that encompasses a lot of cultures. And so it has different foods. A lot of people make it in a different style. Today we're going to try to do a traditional paella. We do not have a paella pan. So we're going to use a three and a half quart Dutch oven uh, casserole pan. That's what we're going to be doing. Good morning, Good morning Karen. Karen. Welcome in. So that's that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be running chorizo sausage. We're going to be doing chicken. Um, we have amberjack fish. We have Argentina shrimp. And we have live mussels. I can't wait to share So wait, are you just this. making one dish out of all those? Yes. yes. Whoa, yes. I'm here for that. I am here for that. Yep. So first thing I'm going to do is get my pan started because you know these pans take a while to heat up. And so we're just going to let that sit on there and start to get hot. Let me show you guys what I've already prepped. So I have my sausage here. It's in the casing. I'm just going to squeeze it out of the casing. We have our chicken. This is seasoned with some Creole seasoning. Yes. All right, so get a little bit of that French Cajun culture in there. Those French African spices. That's what we're talking about. When we talk about Creole, and then this is this is the chicken. The fish has ove on it. Now, usually I'm not seasoning my shrimp and my mussels because those are the things that you want the dish to season, okay? You want the dish to flavor those pieces of seafood. They're only gonna be there in about five minutes. Five to seven minutes, rather. Oh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Food Talk TV. This is gonna be a long cook. I mean, not necessarily long, but it's a long dish, because it's all in one. I mean, it sounds like you're putting um, like 10 meals in one, but. <laughs> yes. So, you know, usually this was used, you know, in poorer families to feed a lot of people. If you ever do some research on the, like on the coast of Portugal and those places where paella is really a big deal. It was. Thank you, Jess Rick. Y'all, while he's chopping and you're feeling like, if you're feeling bad for not doing anything with your hands while he's doing all this work, just tap the screen. We really do appreciate the likes. Be sure you share this live as well. If you don't have any friends to share it to, you can share it to me. Or you can just copy the link. We go live every single day, and this is Meet the Fire with Kunchi. His cooking with Kunchi is over at the top on the recipe card with paella, and that's what we're doing today. Yes. Yep, that's what we're doing. Welcome in everybody. So I am here in Florida. Where are you guys watching from? Type your city in the comments. Yes. I love how paella, I love doing cultural dishes where it's just so vast that there are so many different regions that it just has a different take on it. it because it just makes me feel better about making it and not worrying about it being authentic. You know what I mean? So a lot of people get 
you know, people will tell you, well, that's not how, that's, that's not how paella is made culturally. Well, paella is a blend of cultures. And if I'm making it, I'm Jamaican, I can also put my influence on it because it is a blend of culture. It's not like synonymous with one race or one, you know, style of people. It was really something that was meant to just cook everything together so that we can feed everybody real quick. I love that. And make it delicious. Oh, we got people from Cincinnati. We got Pennsylvania. I'm in Nashville. Well, You're in nice. Florida. Wow, we're all over the place. Well, welcome, welcome. Today. I could honestly just watch you prep food all day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, we're using shallots today. Um, and the full recipe is going to be up on the, or it should be up on the Food Talk TV website. I already submitted photos. Um, as you guys probably are going to see, if you go look at the recipe and you look at what I'm doing, I'm probably not doing the exact same thing. I wrote that recipe. That was the last time I cooked it. Um, like, for example, I used yellow onion the last time. Today I'm using shallots. No big deal, right? It's still an onion. I mean, Unless you want to be a snob about it. Okay, I'm pulling up the website. It doesn't look like your recipe is up yet on the Food Talk TV website, but I'm sure it will be as soon as Kaz yes. gets up. And right. I saw the photos yeah, you took. They were beautiful. It. Yeah, the, those are my daughter's photos, actually. Ah, uh, isn't she going back to school? She's back to school now, so I do not. Oh no! You lost your photographer. <laughs> I do have the camera near me, though. Um, I wanted to take a, a photo of the prep, but I don't think I have a photo of the prep. We've got North Carolina. Hello, Melissa. She's from California, new to the content. Um, Coonchie's on Food Talk TV every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. This is a show, Meet the Fire, but we go live every single day, and we have creators come on every single day. My show's on Thursday nights, and we'll have these recipes over on foodtalktv.com. If you want to check it out right now his recipe isn't up there but it should be within the next hour or so yeah. oh I'll, i need to type your username in the comments so people know where to follow you please thank you uh, hold on i need to spell it right first <laughs> I remember one time I made a video that was like almost like teasing you a little bit and I tagged you and I butchered the spelling of your username so much, but somehow you still found the video. <laughs> <laughs> you you were still there, me, but that's why. it wasn't because I helped you. <laughs> yeah, people always tag me in your videos. Oh yeah, yeah. And I always get tagged in yours. <laughs> so guys, remember, um, well, I can't say remember. <laughs> If you guys were on our, one of our lives a couple weeks ago, we talked about doing a collab. Yes. Good morning. And so, actually, I do have your jerk seasoning right here. I just need to take it to the post office and send it off. Oh, and right what on. Taylor is going to be doing, she's going to be doing a jerk mustard. And then I'm going to, she's going to send me the jerk mustard. And then we are going to do something with that mustard. I don't know what we're going to do yet. What, you don't already know that you're going to bind your meat with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh hi, Andrea. Goodness. Good morning, cutie May. But, yeah, um, no, because that's why we get tagged in each other's videos, because I'm the mustard queen. I do a lot of mustard recipes, a lot of mustard content. Um, Kunchi does a lot of um, smoking content, grilling content, but it's approachable content. So one of his rules is you don't need mustard as a binder. So really, he has, like, a no mustard rule in his house. So that's why we get tagged in all this stuff. But we're working on a collab, so that way he's sending me jerk. I'll make the mustard, send it to him, and we're just going full circle with this. Yeah. We've been using this for like a year now, so it's about time. Yeah. Let's do it. I wish Ashton wasn't so far away. I know. 
Man, like if she was in Georgia rather than Sweden. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But Andrea just so, said that I'm the best cook ever, and she actually did eat some of my food when she um, made a pit stop through Nashville on Friday. That was awesome. You guys got to hang out? Um, for like an hour or so. Like we hung out for a little bit. She was just really uh, stopping through. And it was just one of those random like, oh, hey, I'm in town. Can you can I crash at your place? Sure. Come on over. Let's party. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to hang with some people. All right. I do not have bell peppers. I somehow forgot. So. Well, good thing you're not sticking to any sort of traditional you have to, right? <laughs> exactly. We're not. Oh, These yes. are Argentina red shrimp. These are raw, but they're just super red. Um, are they already deveined? Yes. Did you devein it yourself, or did they devein it? No, we made at the store. It was like a okay. dollar difference per pound when I went to the seafood counter, and I was like, "For a dollar, please devein." Yes. <laughs> Here, take my money. Yeah. I would, yeah. And then we have live mussels. Right. As you can see, we got mussels. Ugly drum smoker says, oh, snap, you're back in an apron. It equals good things to come. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? I mean... On Food Talk TV, we have about an hour, but most of us tend to go over an hour when we do our shows. So when you see that there's just one thing on the recipe card, just paella, he just has one thing on the recipe card, you know it's going to be good. Yeah. He's putting his whole cooking show in on this dish. I love it. Whole show. This is everything. Oh, show. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to have dead, dead space, but we'll figure it out. Oh my goodness, you're already at 5.6k likes. I was so distracted by the prep. I... Oh my god. That Thank escalated guys. quickly. Thank y'all. Yes. Come on over to the pan. So. Except paella. for the fact it's red. I love that pan. <laughs> <laughs> so, because pie is such a rich cultural dish, the very first thing that you want to do is start building flavors. And... We're going to start with, usually we use olive oil and butter. Today I'm going to use a little bit of beef tallow because I have it in my house. I made it. I know that's a rich, beefy flavor. And so you use a stock when you're doing paella. So for example, I do not have beef stock today. But I'm still going to have beefy flavor because I'm using my homemade beef towel, which is really rich, you know. So it's you're not going to miss the beefiness of a beef broth or a beef stock because I'm doing it this way. And is that towel you made yourself? Yes. This is beef towel I made myself. This is actually, this is probably two or three batches of beef tallow. So what I oh, do wow. when I make the beef tallow, I just pour it in this. And so I always have it on hand. I probably have another jar in my refrigerator. So, I mean, that's got to have a really long shelf life in your fridge. Yes. Yes, it does. And guys, I'm also going to add a half a stick of butter. Get, we're gonna get a daddy paddle, okay? That's what I mean. Best dad, this is a gift for my kids. And I have this pan on medium heat, it's been going for about 20 minutes, so it's very hot, it's ready to go. These pans take a really long time, but they work wonders because they carry the heat so evenly. 
This is not a traditional paella pan. A paella pan does not have a lid. And so I just wanted to get something with a lid so that I can kind of... Good morning, not City Girl Kitchen. Hello. And Welcome Smiley says good morning as well. Welcome <laughs> in, Smiley. How are you? Oh, City Girl, thanks for the heart. Appreciate you. Right. Uh, you know, I I got a pan, and I'm certain it's a paella pan, but mine has a lid on it. I don't know either. Like, but also, I'm not even certain mine's a paella pan. I just had someone jump across my live, but their username was only pan, so I believe them. Oh yeah. You might be right, though. I think you're right, and I also yeah, think I, mean, I do not have a paella pan. <laughs> it's it's real. It's really a thin aluminum pan. And they're bigger, they're wider, they're like probably like 18 to 24 inches a lot of the time. Yeah. And so because I know I'm cooking on my stovetop, you know, I don't have an 18 inch surface to heat that pan. And it's not as thick as this, so it's not going to carry the heat as well. Right. And so I want, because I want to get even cooking, I stuff with the Dutch oven. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at all the. Um... I'm looking at paella pans on my computer now, just because, but it does look like a really, really thin piece of metal that's like meant to go over a fire. Yes, right. he is doing chorizo right now. So it's like, if, if you go back to the roots of paella, it was really like a poor man's dish, right? And so you don't have these high quality pans, you know what I mean? It just like to its core, it's really just something that you ha you just kind of made it up. You know what I mean? You know, now that I'm thinking about it, or now that you say that it's a poor man's dish, I can definitely see how it's a poor man's dish, because even, you know, with cost of ingredients or anything, like, time is money. So if you can just put everything into one pot and build all those flavors, you're not cooking things separately and all over the place. So yeah. I can see how a one-pot dish is necessary for a poor man dish. Which is now an elegant dish. Mm. Uh, yes, it's now an elegant dish. I'm going to tell you guys a story. In Jamaica, we have a version of the paella, but it's not like it's not necessarily seafood. It's just whatever you want to put in it. You cook it all with rice. But ours, the flavors are not built like this. You know what I mean? Our flavors are kind of, you just put everything in the pot, and you just put liquid in it and you just let it cook till the rice is cooked and all the meat's cooked and everything's good and it comes together the, the I don't know if I told you but Jeremy's here and says hello as well what's up Jeremy welcome in so the you know the the idea of paella being just a multicultural thing I absolutely believe that because we have a version of it um where I'm from. There's versions that you make with coconut milk as a base, and there's some that you just use water. Oh, yeah. Some Which, like, makes me feel sausage. better about ever wanting to make paella myself, since I'm not, like, ruining the yeah. authenticity of it, because it's so varied. Yeah. What all meats yeah, are you good. putting in this again? Because you had a laundry list of protein that's going into this. Yeah, so this is chorizo, this is what we're putting in, and then we have chicken thighs, we have boneless skinless chicken thighs. Thank you guys for the gift, we appreciate oh, that. I love that sound, thank you Kaz, we're our, we are so close to our, oh, our goal was achieved. Oh, we got thank food, you, thank you. Let's go, thank y'all for helping us meet our goal. So yes, I'm using chorizo, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're also using fish, we're using shrimp, and we're using mussels. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And I'm gonna brown the sausage. So right now the sausage is 
fairly done. You don't want it overdone, but I'm going to remove it from the pan right now. I'm saying this quiet on purpose because I love the sizzle sizzle. Oh. <laughs> I hope you guys can. Guys, if you're not updated to the newest version of TikTok, you will not get smell talk, okay? <laughs> oh man. Um, if that were true, I would be leaving this box right now and updating my app. <laughs> like, bye. Right. So we're going to do our chicken thighs. So when we talk about building flavors, now you have this, the flavor of the chorizo going to be now blended with the chicken flavor and the Cajun seasonings or the Creole seasonings that's on, that's on here. And that's just one more layer of flavor that we're, we're putting on right now. Yes. We're going to let that brown thing and give that a few minutes. And then I'm going Five to says we'll talk. My shrimp. Who, who says we'll talk? Oh, I was saying by the pan because I was like, by says we'll talk. Oh. <laughs> So guys, when I'm making dishes with shrimp, I like to keep this little part on. Because it just, I don't know, it feels Which cool. little part was it? Just the, the tail end. Oh, the, the tail part. end? Well, that's right. flavor. That's flavor. Yep. But a lot of times I'll just take those shells off and then like throw them in some uh, water and make stock out of that real quick. You I do that a lot with shrimp and grits. I'm going to make some stock with this shrimp. Yes. What, I, what I'm going to do, I want to make a multi-flavored stock. So I'm going to freeze this, and then I'm going to get other things to make a stock, like chicken bones, beef bones, um, probably some pork bones. I'm going to make a really rich combination of stock and see what that flavor would be like in a dish. Kaz wants to know what binder you used on your thighs. <laughs> on my thighs? Lotion. But he specifically said, what binder did you use? <laughs> <laughs> no. Butcher's twine. That's what I used. <laughs> Had to tie those seasonings on. I think there. Jeremy said you used ketchup for the binder. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Way to make us both oh. upset. <laughs> this, this shirt is a conversation starter in stores. Is it? Have you had people start conversations with you? <laughs> oh, this lady yesterday, she was like, why is ketchup a garbage condiment? Could you tell me more? And so I was like, no, it it just means that it's not the best condiment ever. And she was like, oh, because she's shopping with her kid. He's like four, <laughs> so he's not, he's not really reading what my shirt is saying, because she was like, you scared me, because ketchup is all he eats. With everything. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, no. Oh, We're not no. trying to say ketchup is dangerous or anything. I mean, you know, probably is, but. That's, See, all that's my friends' kids and like my nieces will always just like kind of tease me about the whole ketchup is garbage thing because they'll be like, look at all this ketchup I'm putting on my food. Look at me eating all of it. So I basically shot myself in the foot with this. Yeah. But it's pretty cool though because. A lot of times, I think every day I go into the grocery store, somebody says something about my shirt. And I tell people that, you know, I have a friend that makes videos on TikTok. She makes mustard and she, she's just not a big fan of ketchup. And so that's where it's from. <laughs> so I do tell people about it. Just so you know.
Oh yeah. No, no, I have. I'm just not a fan that like ketchup is like the de the default condiment, right? Like yeah. if I ever leave my house, like that's the condiment I'm provided for fries. Rude. <laughs> that's true though, because you know, not not everybody thinks about anything else. It's just so automatic. It really is. And so um, I've even had people like seeing my content or being in my Facebook group being like, you know, once I saw that, I realized, why do I do this? <laughs> like, it's not that good. Why do I use ketchup? <laughs> Although with children, I give children a pass, <laughs> of course. Oh, for sure. It, it does take the edge off a lot of things. But, um, Children are just more prone to sweet food. So if the garbage condiment is what gets them to eat their vegetables, cool. <laughs> yep, that's true. So I want to tell you guys a story. I have small friends you, in my house. And um, I just chose to go buy bigger shrimp because they look prettier in, in the paella. Just so you guys know. Taz, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And I've been paying so much attention on your food that I we're already at 11K likes. Thank you guys for all the likes. We appreciate Yeah, it. our commenters are working hard. Yeah, and, and doing everything. Okay, so we're going to continue to build this flavor now. You guys should, you know, we have the chicken cut up in chunks. And it's time to... I would have eaten. Continue to build this flavor. So we're going to go with our onion or our salad. Christina, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're going to go with our garlic. And our shallots. Oh, Jeremy wants to know, is that the chicken you deboned for the first time? Uh, uh, no. No, I took that already. Different chicken? Yeah. So, continuing to build that base of flavor. This is yes, what Rick, thank be. you for coming in hot. Yes. Thank you, Rick. Rick is always here, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Jeremy is always here. Everybody else who's always here, thank you guys so much for showing up for us. Taylor is always here. Babs reached level 15, and Rick, oh, the roses, up, the roses, thank you. Guys, come on. Scratch the screen so you can smell scratch this. Scratch the screen for the scratch the and sip. Version. Rick, you are yeah. amazing. Thank you so much. Bab, thank you so much. Y'all, you have some of the best friends, Coachy. You really do. You have some of the best fans. My people love me. Okay? Love you guys. Thank you. Share, I guess share, great share people love. gravitate towards great people. You know what I mean? Yep. So we have... 60 people in here. Can we get 60 shares? Can we do that? I, I would love for us to do that. Now, you can share the live to anybody. You can share it to Taz. You can share it to me. You can share it to Kunchi. You know, whatever. Or you can just copy the link because that helps us out, too. You know, tricking Al Gore with his rhythm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, my God. This flavor... I do apologize for you guys not being able to taste this food. Okay? Or City smell girl, it. Like, how you doing? Welcome I'm in. trying to scratch and sniff it. Yes. The scratch and sniff works on the latest update on TikTok. Okay? Thank you, Karen, for sharing. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Money shared. Yes. Oh, we're doing paella. We are doing paella. You know that it's a big deal when the recipe card just has the one recipe on there. Paella. <laughs> Throwing so much flavor in here. All right. So now you guys see that 
well, I don't know if you guys can see from there. Grab another but my garlic and my shallots are starting to become translucent a little bit. And so we're going to come in hot. I'm loving the polls here. Because it was asked, um, did you know that pie is eaten from the pan? And I didn't know that. I love that. I, right? I did not know that. But So in the pan so far, you have you had cooked the chorizo. I'm I have someone asking for a recap. So you had cooked mm -hmm. the chorizo and you took that out, right? Took the chorizo out. Oh, there's beef tallow and butter there first before you cook the chorizo. Yes. Oh, you've got your 60 shares. Thanks, Jeremy, for pointing Thank that you. out. Thank you guys for the shares. We appreciate you guys so much. Yes. So it's the beef tallow butter. You cooked the chorizo, removed the chorizo, and then you added back in your seasoned chicken thighs and fish. And now I'm adding the fish. And I also added in and There's the also aromatics. Yes, the un the garlic, the shallots, and the green onions. So we're using Valencia rice, okay? You can use either Valencia rice or there is an actual paella rice. I think the paella rice is just Valencia rice. Um, yeah, when I was doing a quick Google search of paella just now, um, they did say that paella originated in Valencia, even though we discussed that like cultures have adopted all sorts of different ways. So it makes sense yeah. that Valencia rice is paella rice. Yes. And it's once true. again, it's things I learned two seconds ago. A short grain rice. So basically, it's supposed to cook a little bit faster than your traditional long grain rice. Okay, so as long as you can find, so we have three cups of liquid. I'm trying to be exact with the measurements because last time I was not so exact and I kind of got burned a little bit. Oh no! So we'll say it's not quite four cups, right? So that means right. we need a little under eight cups of liquid. Team no rinse. <laughs> And Bob says there's a famous place in Newark that serves it in the pan. All right. I am doing a deep dive on paella now. Like, I'm in it. So I want to tell you guys why you should definitely not rinse paella rice. Whoops. Can't do that. That's bad. TikTok, you should have stopped me. You want the starch in the rice to, to help to make it thicker but there's also a, a trick to that as well you don't want to stir it too much because you will cause the starch to be too activated and then it will get super starchy and become too sticky all right so what we're doing with the rice now we're using it to scrape the fond from the bottom of the pan right the abrasive nature of the rice is going to help us clean that up and keep all that flavor in the food. There you have it. Right there. I like how a city girl said that some rice needs washing, just like read the packaging because the packaging will tell you. But um, I'm one of those girls where I get something and then I put it into a different container. <laughs> mm -hmm. So some rice, That's a good like, tip. Um, say, like uh, I use jasmine rice in my house. Okay, jasmine rice does not does not need washing because it's not super starchy to begin with, and so if you wash it, you're just removing that little bit of extra starch. That's going to keep it together. Like just basic, cheap, regular grain rice. You should definitely wash that because they don't do a lot of processing to that, right? You, it's like sixty cents a pound. They're not going to they're not going to make it perfect for you. So probably rinse that to get some of the 
dirt and you know whatever off just from processing but really you know that's that's kind of about it the the, the other rice that high dollar rice and like you know rices that come in a bag you really probably don't even need to mess with those too much all right so what we did was we used the flavors in the pan to flavor the dish okay we didn't we didn't really do too much the only thing I'm gonna do right now is add a pinch of where is my salt and pepper All right, I'm just gonna go a pinch of salt just a just a pinch of sea salt okay that's it and then So we notice these chunks of fish are in here, the chunks of chicken are in here. Because we have all this rice now, and we're gonna add our liquid, we can put our sausage in. Yeah. Get that juice. Wow, you just hit 17K likes. Thank you guys for 17,000. We appreciate every single tap. Tappy tappy makes Kunchi happy. You know that, right? All right, so we're gonna go in with eight cups of liquid, okay? And if you're enjoying this live and you're not following Kunchi, you absolutely should because he does this all day, every day, basically. But he spends a lot of time on the smoker, too. Mostly on the smoker. So guys, we can't fit eight cups of liquid in here. So what are we going to do? But even just know. putting your username into Google, like, you see all sorts of, like, cool recipes or the like, cool things you've done. And what's the name of your Facebook group, too? My Facebook group is called Operation Community BBQ. And if you guys are in Florida, we're having an event later this year called Winging It for a Cause, where we are partnering up with local businesses to raise money for a charity called Race to Stop Suicide, September is Suicide Prevention Month. And so that's a fundraising effort put on. Yes, please drop his Facebook group in here. Please do. Yes, please. By my nonprofit. Okay. And I love that not only you show like really cool food, but you also do some great things for your community. That is so awesome. Winging it for a cause. That is so cool. Yep. It's all about the community for me. All about the community. It's called impact. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. At, at this, this current stage, I do not have a barbecue history. Or my granddaddy didn't pass me down a smoker and nobody gave me recipes. So I'm kind of building my barbecue legacy at the moment. Should my kids or you know somebody else in my family want to carry that on, then they would have something positive to move on from. Right? Go. See that old bay seasoning. Yeah. Okay. So I think we got about five cups of liquid in here. We're going to see how this works. And I'm going to cover it. Yes. All right. Is Babs in here still? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Bob said that you just went to a dealership to share your food. Oh, yes. 15 minutes, Babs. I'm putting Babs on timer duty. Oh, yeah, timer so, duty. Uh, what I did at the car dealership was over the weekend, I made a bunch of pulled pork, and then I took it over to the car dealership to just give samples out. 
And oddly enough, on Sunday, one of those dealerships reached out and they ordered lunch for 10 people yesterday. Seriously, I love that pan, but the color red. <laughs> oh, is that pissing you off, Papa? <laughs> All right. I love how Babs is always on timer <laughs> duty. <laughs> Watch this oh, be the hey, time guys. where like that it's like, oh crap, I gotta <laughs> leave. <laughs> welcome in everyone. Um, welcome Melissa. Danny, how you guys? I think doing? all of us set timers. <laughs> yes, thank you guys. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> hey Jeanette, what's up? So again, as I told you guys, I'm gonna put my shrimp pickings into the freezer this is exactly and the kind of stuff i do like my freezer is just stuffed with scraps of like yep. to make other things you know so i'm gonna make a scrap stock i'm gonna start saving like the the scraps from the peppers the scraps from the onions it's okay babs we got you all the scraps like yeah look at it from the i have a bag in my freezer just of corn cobs because wow. that makes a really great stock. I believe that. I absolutely believe it. Corn I also it. keep fruit scraps in my freezer because you can turn it into vinegar. Uh-oh. That's Good like a month thing. or two project. Good thing everybody else was here. So you... Oh, no. People are here. <laughs> out. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hey, um... So let's see. So welcome in everybody. Can you guys just type on the screen? Let's see where you're from. Where are you guys at today? I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida. Shout out your city. Let's shout your city out today. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. Nashville. Yep, we got the scrimps going. Got some big old Argentina Reds, Malone, Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan, West Virginia. <laughs> How you doing? New Jersey. What's up, Chicago, New York, Akron, Akron, Ohio. How you doing? Oh, we're spread Danny all over. That's from, awesome. Uh, North Carolina. I know Danny's in Afghanistan. What's up, Vero Beach? How you doing? Georgia. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Central Alabama. How you doing, Thunk? California. Welcome in. Welcome in. North Texas. How you got Please keep double tapping on that screen, guys. Send up some likes and also share the live so that other people can come and share it. I did, oh my God. Did I say people? Yeah, it's kind of gotten to the point with my sister where it's like, don't look at your messages. It's just me sharing a live. <laughs> or do because I'm sharing a great live. <laughs> I love this beautiful variety. Yes, a Daytona Beach original. Awesome. Yep. I'm here in the Daytona Beach area. All right. If you're ever in town, dude, come over. We got dinner every day. Money. How you doing, James? Central Texas. What's up? What's up? 20 likes. 21,000. Welcome in. So I'm going to make a drink. I'm going to make a drink. Because you know why? Because I want to. I wanna... I'm going to make a manmosa again. Sending a hat. Stay there. Uh, what kind of hat am I getting today? Oh, <laughs> oh man, I almost yes. didn't get the screenshot, Thank but you. we save these Thank lives. Then if you miss this live or want to rewatch it, like just go on YouTube or Facebook later. Rosalind, good so morning. I'm going to have to do that to get that visual of you in the cowboy hat and the mustache. Doing a little. Good morning. What does your t-shirt say? My t-shirt says ketchup is a garbage condiment. This is Taylor's shirt. I'm just supporting her. I hate ketchup anyway. It took a long so, time West for Virginia. you to support me too. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, it took a minute. Okay. Yes. All right, so we've got that going. Hold on, I'm going to go get some triple sec for my drink. Oh, yeah, my favorite ingredient. Yeah, while he's go, oh, yeah. going to grab that, I say that because I'm weirdly <laughs> allergic to triple sec. Triple sec is an orange liqueur. And um, I'm allergic to triple sec, but not all triple secs. It's not the, um, like, Cointreau or Grand Marnier. Those are going to be some of the higher quality triple secs, which have a different flavor. Because, um, oh, yes, you have one I'm allergic to. Yay. Because the Grand Marnier and Cognac, or not Cognac, what, why am I saying that? Cointreau, they're starting with a brandy base. When, like, some of those cheaper triple secs are, like, the clear, like, grain alcohol base there. Jameson Orange. Oh, yeah, I remember that orange drink. The Man Mosa. Man what are you Mosa. making today? The, I'm making the Man Mosa. Oh, you're making a Man Mosa. Yeah, and you're doing it with Grand drinks. Marnier. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Just for you. Yep, no ketchup on the Chicago style hot dog. Love it. No, um, people always send me memes, and like I always see the photo of like, one of those electronic sides that goes over the highway where it's like um, no drinking and driving and then no catch up <laughs> on those highway signs in Chicago. Love it. But like, so making my whole shtick being like my username is ketchup is garbage and it's a fun shtick but people always send me photos of like people inappropriately using ketchup and like even on my facebook group all it is is just memes of like ketchup so it's like great i made content about something i hate so i see it all the time great <laughs> <laughs> let's show her this to piss her off like but honestly my mustard content is not only more fun but it's less hateful. Oh yeah, people send me a lot of barbecue stuff and I, <laughs> like stuff that time, like, like you like, hate. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why do you guys tag me in stuff like this? You know, they like want people that make they the want the drama. Videos? Oh yeah, they want. The they drama. want you to start a fight. <laughs> I'd love to start a fight. Yeah. I'm just going to add a little bit more JMO because I'm such a big fan. All right. So, so far, we have Grand, Grand Marnier, Marnier, Jameson Orange. Yes. Almost equal parts. Okay. I put a little bit more bourbon in there, whiskey in there because I'm that guy. Well, my thing is, when you're making something like this, you can always add more OJ. Yeah. Like, especially um, as a bartender and doing mimosas, like, I typically will just do, like, a touch of OJ. So, you know, always add more. I don't have my little lid here. If your shaker bottom is long, if your shaker bottom is large enough that you can fit a pint cup in there, that's what I do a lot. So I actually have the other shaker glass. Oh, I've you do have a um, Boston shaker. Yeah. But I, I, I was trying to show you my versatility, you know? Oh, there you go. You know what? I should have just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, I have worked in some of, like, the most, like, very craft, like, very particular, like, this is how you stir the cocktail with your spoon, kind of, you know, pretentious. <laughs> yes. The type of places where um, it's not bartending. Like, you're not a bartender, you're a mixologist, which, <laughs> don't ever call me that. <laughs> Hi, Ashton. Hi. Ashton is another one of our Food Talk TV creators, um, just like Granny. Her recipes are awesome. My ice broke. Aww. How 
Why did it break? You said bad words. Oh, look at all those shares. Y'all are so awesome. I love it. Yes. Love it. Love it. I do appreciate how his man Mosa is like in a um, glass like this. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get one big, like one big ice ball. Oh, you know, no. It's, I think some of the liquid like drained out when I put it in there. Okay. So now I have a half a moon of ice. There you go. That works. I like that. Uh, I like that presentation. Uh oh. Why is this so limp? Do I need a thicker slice? Probably. Guys, I'm not a bartender. I'm not so a chef. Sometimes, like, whenever I can't get the orange to sit on the glass because it's a little thin or whatever, I'll just shove it in the glass so that way, like, you get the orange on the inside. There we go. Oh, there you go. That one's behaving. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I have a lot of, like, really weird, almost silly bartending rules in my head. Yes. That is such a great morning drink. That really is. Wait, did anybody say that the timer? Oh, um, yeah, you're two minutes past. No one said anything about the timer, <sighs> but it's just two minutes past. Oh. We'll be fine. Oh, I my think. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And I have, like, five people saying that they had a timer, and I did, too, but my timer, I guess, can we blame it on the booze? Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's do that. All right, so now, looking at it, I'm thinking in another few minutes. So I'm going to turn this to low, medium heat. I think Babs went on a phone call. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it's got to get them shrimp in presentation format. Hold, 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 hold up, hold up. Hold up. Where's my obey? So I didn't season before because I wanted my seasoning to still have a little bit of integrity, a little bit of texture for photos and video wise. And so when you, when you season it, you just put it in kind of right away. You get more, you see more of the seasoning on it. Oh yeah. That's a good tip for food photography. Yeah. Melissa coming in hot with the fire. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa is going to be at our event. Her husband is one of the competitors in our wing cook-off. Oh, that's awesome. Why is this like that? Wait a minute. Yep, it's that guy. There we go. Yeah. Me out there. And then. Ooh, I am tapping the screen because that is just too gorgeous. Blessed man, thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you for coming in hot with those chilies. Yes. You got 15 chili peppers because that dish looks fire. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Ah. Nice. Kaz, thank you for liking the live. Appreciate you. Oh, Blessed ah. Man is competing too. That's awesome. Oh, yes. Blessed Man is one of, one of my guys too. All my people are here. All right, guys. So here we have our dish ready. So five minutes, okay? You know what? I'm going to set my own timer because you guys scare me. And you're not even the one drinking. <laughs> it 
so sad that your photographer is back at school. Yeah, I'm so bummed. Oh, Money says they're also competing. Oh, right on. Oh, yeah, Money is also, yeah. Well, so Sandy Shepard, about... I did not see what gift you gave, but thank you so much for that. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you have you, a you good crowd. You always bring good people here. I love my people, man. They they show so much love. It's going to be a great um, weekend for a great cause. Yes. So we are, we're having three guys <laughs> who usually, he thinks to see what we're doing. are drinking? <laughs> All right, guys. I don't know what, what's going on. It's there. literally five o'clock somewhere, you know? Yeah. Ashton should know what time it is in Sweden. I don't know what time it is, but it better be five o'clock. <laughs> so yes, the the drink. I'm telling you guys, this drink is sneaky good. The recipe is up on the page, I think. Right, Kaz? Of the man Mosa. The it's man so Mosa. Good. You know, please go check it out. Go up on our website. Uh, foodtoptv.com four in Sweden, almost five. It works. Oh. Yep, so cash the, says it's the, up. Oh, it's four o'clock in Sweden. Okay. Yeah. The, the bitterness from the orange just completely cancels out the, the whiskey. You're literally just tasting flavors. You're not having any, you know, like, just, not, it, I love it. That's dangerous. Free gaming for us. <laughs> Large man Mosa. Yes. It's, uh, you know, I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been I thinking it. about this for a bit because you did say man Mosa. And the first time I saw you make it, because and I didn't want you to tell me the ingredients because I wanted to like write my own recipes and I I think about that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like if I had my own bar, what would my manmosa be? But I don't think I would stray too far from what you're doing. I would probably just like shove a strip of bacon in there. That would be good. Maybe maybe like a touch of maple like syrup or something to make it like a manly like I don't know. Add a, a little, I don't know. I'm, I still think about I mean, it. <laughs> a, a spicy well, meat that, thank you. Would, would be good. I got chocolate covered strawberries. That's so awesome. I didn't even know that was a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> now, what is bitter is made from, Taylor? Um, What are, what are bitters made from? <clears throat> oh, did I ever tell you about the time that I spent, my husband and I spent $50 each on an old fashioned? Did I ever tell you that about that? No. <laughs> but, um, and it, when I was done drinking it, it was like, yeah, that was a $50 drink. <laughs> but, um, hmm. what they did was it was, um, Blanton's bourbon, but then they fat washed it with bacon fat. So what you do with that, you can do this with any liquor, any fat, and you just um, shake it, you put it in a jar and you shake it, let it sit on the counter and continue to shake it. And then you stick it in the freezer. And so then the freezer will like get that fat into one disc for you and you take that out and it just like adds body and stuff to that. So it was a Wagyu fat washed bourbon. And then they hmm. put it in a little cup with like a little smoker lid over the top. So when it got to you at the table, like they just like removed the top of it. So it was like smoking underneath. And like, there was like a little bitty piece of like some of that Wagyu meat. Ooh. And that was a $50 old fashioned. Like, man, I know they put bitters and yeah. stuff in there as well, but not a man Mosa, but I was thinking that was pretty like man fashioned. <laughs> yeah. So is it just, man, that, that sounds good. Was the yeah, Wagyu yeah. You can get crazy with the fat washing. Still? Hmm? Was the Wagyu beef raw still? No, no, it was, um, they used the fat from the Wagyu beef, but like the little pit bit they put on was like a medium rare, like thin slice that was kind of like in a squiggle, but it was the Wagyu beef fat that you shake with the liquor and then you freeze it and remove the fat. 
Ooh, add a roasted jalapeno. That would. I love jalapenos in drinks. All right, I could talk all day long cool. about cocktails. So, the code this word to get me to stop talking now. is Taylor. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one day we should make a food talk TV pan. Okay. Yes. All right. You guys ready? Thank you, City Girl Kitchen. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Y'all seeing that? So it does have a little bit more steaming to do. You can see all the muscles are opened up right now. Pretty good. Those are going to continue to cook. So I'm going to say about seven minutes. Still on medium low. Loving right, it. Right, don't want to overcook it, but all that seafood on top, though, that's a nice way to do that. Just letting it steam with the other flavors you already have in the pot. Oh, I'm obsessed. Yes. So, you know, like you've built so much flavor, you're letting the flavor just infuse everything. And that is where the richness of the paella comes from. Is all the ingredients together creating one crazy rich flavor for you. What? Oh, so amazing. Yes. You're steaming the muscles. Recipe paella. Mm. Right. I'm, I'm I have really need to stop kitchen. coming to these things hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you say that every week. I know I do. And then I forget every week. I don't think you added saffron. Did you? No, I didn't see that. Oh, Someone was just asking, but I. Saffron. Oh my God. How do you forget the saffron? I paid so much money for it. This little thing of saffron cost me like six bucks. You know, honestly, I was expecting you to say something closer to like 12. So the, the lady in the store was like, oh my God, there's a price drop on the saffron. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, it was 1150 the last time I checked some out. Oh yeah. Oh, um, what I would do, are you just sprinkling yeah. it in there? What, what would you do? You know what? I don't think we have time for it because I usually blew mine, but I usually blew mine first with like putting it on an ice cube and letting that melt. But since it's a last minute touch, I think this will be fine. <laughs> oh. Just whatever you usually do. I went on a saffron deep dive recently to learn like why it's so expensive, but it's one of those things where it comes out of a flower and it just takes so long just to get, I think. I read a number that was ridiculous, like 500,000 flowers just to get one pound of saffron. What? Something ridiculous like that. Oh, my God. Yeah, no wonder it's so expensive. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. So it's going to steam there, and then we will stir it in. We didn't use too much. Oh, hold on. I said I was going to clean up. Come on, guys. You know. Watch you work. Hmm. Yeah, Marissa asked, like, at what point do you have to add saffron? And I want to say, like, I don't think you do have to. Like, I know it's a traditional ingredient, but also if you don't have it. If you don't, if, but if you, it's ideal to add it before you add, right, right before you add the seafood. So it's going to be between the seafood, between the shrimp and the mussels and the rice, you're getting that flavor into the rice and into the seafood. And then you're gonna stir it around. So I'm gonna stir it around anyway. It's gonna be good still, but. Oh yeah. You wanna add it when, you're, you're, when the dish is coming together, right? Oh, is that when you do? Okay. <laughs> Apparently I need to deep dive on saffron more. So do you put it in the beginning of the cook, or is that what, I don't know if I'm using it wrong. I mean, it's just one of those things that everyone just does something about that differently. Um, I just saw the ice cube trick for um, paella once upon a time 
or not paella, I'm sorry, with the saffron, where you put the saffron in an ice cube, and by the time the ice cube melts, the saffron is fully bloomed and it's okay to use. Because they're, everyone just has different tips and tricks. That was the, that's my go-to, though. But then we'd be sitting here watching an ice cube melt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's more of like a forethought thing, which I don't often have. Yes. So that I would be probably need to do that like when the saffron like when the dish when I'm starting the dish. And then it'll be ready. Oh wow. I'm I just googled saffron to see like what some of the prices were looking like and McCormick it's selling like 0 0.06 of an ounce. Okay, 0 0.06 of an ounce for $34. <laughs> 0 0.06 of an ounce. Wow. <laughs> so you know what? Good call picking that up on sale. Still wasn't cheap, but good job on that. <laughs> I think Walmart's a ripoff though, because like other things don't look so expensive. Yeah. You know, Walmart, I've noticed them doing this online, is they jack the prices up, and then they drop the price and say it's on sale, but it goes back to regular price. Yeah, and I've been noticing on Walmart online, too, when you go shopping for stuff on Walmart, that, like, it's actually sold and shipped by a third party, yeah. which confuses me. So... What Walmart does, which is, well, it's not crazy in today's world, but they buy up a lot of companies. They buy up a lot of their competitors, and that's not strange for Walmart, right? But they still, they allow people, most of the times they allow you to keep ownership of your company. You know, like, you keep the warehouse, you, you do all the fulfillment and all that stuff, but they just make sure you get all the business. And so they've been doing that while also lowering the quality of the products because they want to be able to sell it cheaper and make more money. It's just also. Oh, I need y'all to see how pretty the saffron flower is. Look how pretty that is. That's the flower itself? Yeah, that's the flower itself. And you see the little like stringy things coming out of the bulb? Yeah, that's, the that's the saffron tendrils and um i gotta make sure i'm saying a correct figure here but i remember reading five hundred thousand flowers just for one pound of saffron so so pretty but um yeah saffron you don't really need that much of saffron for it it is really aromatic it is a really flavorful thing so you can get away with a couple of tendrils in that entire dish I like how you know the name. Just tendrils. When do we use just five drills? You know what I mean? All right, guys. What do y'all think? You think she's ready? I think she's ready. Got a little, little bit of moisture in there. Let me see what this is saying. Okay, seventy-five thousand might be more realistic. Seventy-five thousand flowers. Yeah, that might be a bit more realistic. Dang. Mm. And I like some of the other stats people are coming up with it. Like I'm on the Wikipedia page now, and someone says that it's forty hours of labor or required to pick 150,000 flowers. So one person needs to have a 40 hour work week just to pick 150,000 flowers, which may be one or two pounds. I can see how that's expensive. Mm -mm -mm. So oh crap, now I got to the phytochemistry. I know what I'm doing with my day today. 
<laughs> the, the rice is still a little bit tough. We're going to shut it down. We're shutting the, the stove off. We're keeping it right here on the heat. We don't want to cook too much. We just want to steam. And so that's what we're doing right now. We don't let that sit there for about five minutes and then and then we're gonna stir it and then we're gonna do do our thing all right on oh yeah we are already at 25k let's go ahead and get to 30 Oof. like while we're here and y'all be sure if you are just scrolling through here this is food talk tv we go live every single day be sure you're following cooking with country he goes live all the time including every tuesday morning 10 a.m eastern you know, at this point, though, I'm pretty sure that everyone that's here in this room right now already is fully aware of who you are and all the things you do. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Double tap on that screen. We appreciate it. Um, somebody asked if we roast this. I've never roasted saffron. Um, I think it's... <laughs> it's too expensive for me to... Yeah, it's too expensive for that. And yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah, I just hit like the kind of science about saffron part of Wikipedia, and it just starts with it. Saffron contains 28 volatile compounds and aromatic yielding compounds. And the thing with that, it's like it just means it evaporates super quickly. So if you're roasting it, you're losing that flavor real quick. Oh, That's what okay. I tell people okay. like whenever they're cooking something fast and you're getting like a lot of steam and flavor out of your food. It's like, well, all of those sensory compounds are evaporating with the water. Like if you're really smelling your food a lot, like it's okay to smell like what your food is. But if it's like a strong smell, it means you're losing a lot of those flavor compounds. Yeah, because once you're smelling it, it's it's gone, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not in the dish anymore. It's in your nose. Oh, so Sazon has saffron in it. Does it? Really? That's what Interesting. I, City Girl I love these lives where I learn just by hanging out. Mm. Guys, Manmosa. If you don't have a job like me, that you gotta clock in, drink a mimosa today. Right now, get you a manmosa. Okay. Manmosa. Yeah. So, so what I'm reading, I don't think Saison has it, but it does have a natto, which is used for um, a red coloring agent, which. Um, Saffron is often used for that red color as well. So it may be one of those, like, it looks like it has saffron in it. So, like, it tastes like it has saffron in it to me. But from what I'm seeing, because that is a relatively cheap spice, and I don't think it would be one to, like, dry and crumble with the other things. So that's probably what is what is up. And placebo effect, I think. <laughs> so sorry if I ruined a uh, saison for you. <laughs> wow, that must have been good. Y'all, thank you for the gift. Someone just gifted me some more. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for all the gifts. Yes, we to... are feeling pretty loved here. And I'm glad to be back for Tuesday again. Sorry I missed last week, but I'm ready to hang out in the morning. Saxon. Uh -huh. Oh, I think you meant says, Yeah. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Saison, Sazon. It's one of those things I've only read. Yeah. But then Sazon. there's also the O, oh, so the Saison. Oh, th that was me trying to do French. Um, Saison. Uh, okay. Sazon. I think it's pronounced Sazon. Sazon. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I'm the type of person um, that will like Google how to pronounce something and just like practice it over and over again. And my favorite, though, is when those are just, like, so blatantly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun way to go viral. Yeah, oh, yes. Right? Be sure you are in his Facebook group, Operation Community Barbecue. 
I love that you have people that are plugging you because that's awesome. Your Facebook group is really cool. Uh, what's up, Raymond? How you doing, man? And my uh, my brisket Sunday finished amazing. The customer loved it. It was to die for. Um, I wish I was eating it myself. Yes. I was doing a brisket and I had a little mishap with my fire. Oh no! And so, like for like two hours, my fire dropped. I didn't really notice because I don't really go check the meat like all the time. I went out there and I was like, "What?" Go went back and look on my app, and the, the temp was dropping for a while. So, oh man. Anyways, I fired up another smoker because I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna do this." And then my other smoker started to come back up to temp while the other one was, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> So I still had to move it anyway because one smoker I couldn't shut down easily. The other one I can shut down really easy. And I should have just been patient and just know that it's going to come back. You know what I mean? And then. Oh, yeah. Anyways. It's hard to be patient, though. And it's kind of one of those, it's a lot easier to have foresight about it. Hindsight is 20, or hindsight. It's a lot easier to look mm -hmm. back at yourself and be like, well, that was dumb. <laughs> mm hmm. But yeah. like, you're in a different mindset after the fact. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to finish this brisket to deliver it to the customer so that they can have dinner. And so I'm like, oh, my God, I got to do this. I got to do that. And then just get, you know, flustered. And... But it's yeah. good. I didn't ruin it. Carved it on live and people came in saying it was dry. As, as usual. I bet it's those same people that have like never used a smoker in their lives. Nice. They saw Bobby Flay do it once and so they're an expert. <laughs> right? Or they read a recipe once or they saw somebody right. who they really liked do a video once. Right. And they saw like the edited version of it. It's one you know, thing that makes live cool. content more interesting. Exactly. A lot of people don't show their cooking actually live. Every time I'm barbecuing, every weekend. So if you guys don't follow me, every weekend I barbecue. I barbecue five to seven days a week. And I go live most of the time at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of my processes so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and what is happening. And like, if there's something negative or is there something positive, I'm going to share it with you. A lot of creators don't do that and they don't show you the ins and outs. They don't show you every little detail of what's going on because they don't want to look bad. I mean, it's not looking bad. You have to know that if something happens with your fire, okay, what do you do? And things happen all the time. Like my neighbor, his fire went out because he kicked the grill and one of the charcoal, like two of the charcoal pieces fell out of place. And so when they were lighting, they didn't have the next piece to connect to. And so he came home and like, it wasn't done. And he was like, what the hell happened? You know, and then he just looked and was like, my fire just went out right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So things happen all the time. Yes, so please. Just, <laughs> One of those for the things. for the queen, sorry, I was reading. Uh... Oh yeah, the man, the meat, the myth. Oh yeah, well that um, barbecue mustard recipe that I posted was from last year, and I think that was like one of the first videos you ever saw of mine. Was like a barbecue seasoning flavored mustard. So I think I need to recreate that myself to see uh, where this mustarding person is as opposed to last year. I'm loving the feature that TikTok has for the on this day. So I'm really seeing how much I grew. Yeah, you can see like, last, did I really say that last year? Oh my God. Oh, your, your barbecue sauce. Yes, please. Yes, please. For me, mostly I'm seeing how long my hair grew. Oh, Jeremy, it, was, it wasn't it was Jimmy. It was my other neighbor. Oh, okay. And, um, 
Do you guys eat these? Out of the orange? No? Am I the only one? Mm. Boo. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. We're going to check this paella right now. All right, come on over. What's up, Linda? No. Let's see what it's looking like. Okay. My rice is looking fully steamed at the moment. Whew. Take a picture, y'all. Take hold on, hold on. Let me center. Let me center that photo for you. Wait, don't take a picture yet. Don't take a picture yet. Okay. We gotta. We gotta internetify this recipe. This is this year. So it looks internet. Oh yes. Okay. Perfect image for me to come back to. See? So I've been reading ready, a lot of Home and Garden magazines can, and this is it. Now you can take a a screenshot. Just give me a second, I'm gonna take a photo here. Oh, I did not know that you can't take screenshots of lives. Like, it's not letting me take a screenshot. Oh, well, maybe it's not allowing you. Yeah, maybe it says it has to do with security. Does anyone else have any um, problem doing a screenshot? Due to security reasons. Okay, yeah, so it looks like they changed that. Okay. Really? Interesting. So be sure, yeah, so be sure you take pictures because we can't screenshot it. Okay, other people are saying they did. Okay, so half of us are saying that we can't and half of us are saying that we can't. Interesting. They just don't trust some of you guys. Yeah, I guess I'm just not trustworthy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically everyone else is saying they did and it was just a couple other people that aren't allowed to. I wonder if iPhone will? Okay, it's an iPhone thing. Oh, yeah, can you uh, center the pan? I think the comments are, like, slightly covering the bottom part of the dish. Yes, that's it. Did somebody ask me to center the pan? Yes, oh, someone did. Bougie. Yeah, because they want the screenshots that I can't get. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Ah. Uh, that looks like it belongs in a home and garden magazine. I know, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're going to make some dishes here. I'm going to use the service. A wooden spoon? Mmm, good. Yes. And guys, so compared to my last time, I didn't get a lot of burning in the bottom of the pan. What I did to try to remedy that was <laughs> I made sure I dropped the heat. And 
I also added more liquid. Oh, come on, y'all. We are almost at 30K for this. Almost at 30K likes. Come on, guys. Come on. I deserve 30K. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I've done I, enough work to get 30K. I believe so. I will never not laugh at my sister thinking that you could only hit one like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she must have thought I was amazing coming onto my lives and seeing 10K likes and being like, whoa, 10K people came in here. <laughs> yeah. I'm power tapping. Power tapping. Yeah, it was uh, one of Kaz's lives or like, um, and I was in the box and someone said that they had gotten their like massage gun and like had it on the screen and got like over a thousand. <laughs> All right. Now guys, if you want to see fancy plated dishes like this, you have to come to the live because I don't show fancy plating on my videos. Now, you might want to know why. And sure, I'll tell you why. I don't show fancy platings on my videos because it's kind of an illusion that everything we make is just so beautiful and put together when really I cook for my family, right? And so I don't go make fancy plates when I'm serving my family food because that's not what, you know, like that's not what's important to them. Well, you know, they manipulate those photos too a lot of the times. Like I stumbled across a video the other day where someone was like, hey, are you trying to photograph mac and cheese and you're wanting it to look extra creamy? We'll mix in corn syrup with it because it'll glisten and look gooey. But then you just added corn syrup to your mac and cheese and it's not tasty anymore. Yes, and and those are the things that I, I try not to show in my content. Before before I became, you know, like popular in this content creation world, I thought that that was important. And so I used to do those things. I don't do that anymore. It's not as important. It really, really doesn't matter. And I don't show it up. So if you look at my videos, you won't really see it pretty platings. You'll see me taking a stab with a- We have 30K! 30K likes. Thank you all so much. You guys are amazing. And Raymond my says, people, say it before people. you became famous. Before I became famous. <laughs> I forged. All right, here we go. Kaz, you are amazing. Thank you for the roses. Yes, before I became famous. I oh, a city girl. Forever. Thank you. Thank you for the roses. Forges love the little finger hearts. Thank you. And y'all are fighting for that number three, number two gifter badge. Okay. Fight, 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 fight. Is Kaz number one or is it me? Yep, number one is Kaz and then Melissa and then Forged and then City Girl and then, oh, me with zero. I got a, I got a gift a hot dog. Because that's the closest thing I can give to mustard. So this finished plate will be also up on the website, but the full recipe is going to be up on the website. Oh, I'm sorry. Some I'm getting, I'm getting a comment in my headset. TikTok is asking me to taste this so that you guys know how it tastes, and I will do that. I really. I had planned to not taste the food today, but here we go. All for right. us. You're doing, doing it for this. us. I'm doing it for you As guys. As a favor. I'm really, I really don't want to do this, okay? 
I really don't want to. See you, Raymond. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Raymond. Have a good rest of your day, buddy. All right. So in the dish itself, you know, we got the fish, the sausage, the chicken, and the rice. Yes. How is that not good? Like, there's just no way. Oh my god! Wow. What all? all right. What were all the meats that you put in there again? So we had shrimp. We have mussels, chorizo sausage, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and fish. The fish today was amberjack. Dang. Let me taste one of these shrimp. And that shrimp looks like it's cooked perfectly. Even with that extra steaming time, like you did it mm -hmm. at just the right temperature to make the shrimp just perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm just too good at this, okay? I'm sorry. Mm. Yes. It's so good. Now you know the muscle came in at the end there. We're just going to give it some rice for an accompaniment. Ooh, a piece of chicken. Mm -mm. I'm always really terrible at the parts. Guys, please make a paella. Yes. Everybody deserves to taste. Everybody deserves what a paella. paella. Tastes like. It's so good. It's so rich, so flavorful. And I'm not tasting chorizo. I'm tasting a little bit of seafood vibe, you know, like from the muscle. But everything else is just so perfectly blended. Do you think maybe it's just adding a bit of smokiness to it? I don't know. I don't know. Smokiness. But that's good that smokiness. the chorizo is but, taking over because it's strong. Yes. That's fantastic. But if you cook it over an open fire, like traditionally they do, you will get that fire smoky flavor. You know what I mean? And it's also not covered at all when they cook it in traditional ways over the fire. So you're getting a hundred percent fire get flavor. all that flavor and smoke on that. Good morning, good morning. Hey Andrea, how you doing? Welcome in. But guys, please make a paella. Go up to the website. Get the recipe. Did Kaz is the recipe up yet? All right, we're going to put a little squeeze of lemon on it. So do that. I'm torn because the southern girl in me really wants to um, make this a grits dish. But also torn because the mustard girl in me is trying to figure out how to put mustard in here. <laughs> no. No mustard. No mustard. Let's have a truce. No mustard, no ketchup. <laughs> Hey, if I didn't have mustard, I wouldn't have content, okay? <laughs> I, I love it. but So, okay, the recipe will be up in 20 minutes. With some gorgeous photos. Gorgeous. So I'm, I'm going to send you this plated recipe, Kaz. Um, so beautiful. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. This is Food Talk TV. If you're watching this as a replay on Facebook or on YouTube, please consider subscribing to our page. All right, today we made paella. Beautiful, delicious dish. I love it. All right, thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. See you next week, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we appreciate everybody. Take care, bye. everyone. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. All right, bye-bye.